I will praise you, Lord, among the nations. I will tell of your name to my kin. Alleluia. Alleluia. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Um, brothers and sisters, that we might celebrate more worthily these sacred and joyful mysteries, we prepare our hearts. We call to mind those times that we've sinned and we ask for God's pardon and peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, life of the faithful, glory of the humble, blessedness of the just, listen kindly to the prayers of those who call on you, that they who thirst for what you generously promise may also have their fill of your plenty. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The word of God continued to spread and grow. After Barnabas and Saul completed their relief mission, they returned to Jerusalem, taking with them John, who is called Mark. Now there were in the church at Antioch prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manian, who was a close friend of Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul, for the work to which I have called them. Then completing their fasting and prayer, they laid hands on them and sent them off. So they, sent forth by the Holy Spirit, went down to Seleucia and from there sailed to Cyprus. When they arrived in Salamis, they proclaimed the word of God in the Jewish synagogues. The word of the Lord. O oh God, let all the nations praise you. O oh oh God, God, let, let all, all the, the nations, nations praise you. May God have pity on us and bless us. May he let his face shine upon us. So may your way be known upon earth, among all nations, your salvation. O oh oh God, God, let, let all, all the nations, nations praise, praise you. you. May the nations be glad and exalt because you rule the peoples in equity. The nations on earth you guide. O oh God, God, let, let all, all the, the nations, nations praise you. you. May the peoples praise you, O oh God. May all the peoples praise you. May God bless us, and may all the ends of the earth fear him. O oh oh God, God, let, let all, all the, the nations, nations praise you. Brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus cried out and said, Whoever believes in me believes not only in me, but in the one who sent me. And whoever sees me sees the one who sent me. I came into the world as light. So that everyone who believes in me might not remain in darkness. But if anyone hears my words and does not observe them, I do not condemn him. For I did not come to condemn the world, but to save the world. Whoever rejects me does not reject my words. And, excuse me, whoever rejects me and does not accept my words has something to judge him. The word that I spoke it will condemn him on the last day because I did not speak on my own. But the father who sent me commanded me to say what to say and to speak. 
I know his commandment is eternal life. So what I say, I say as the Father told me. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Lord Jesus Christ. Two things that I would love for us to uh, consider uh, from our readings today. Uh, Actually, it's it's three, sorry. The first one is uh, we hear the beginning of something fairly remarkable in the book of Acts, this little group of Paul, Barnabas, and John Mark. Now, everyone knows St. Paul. Uh, He wrote three quarters of the New Testament. He's, uh, I think, the third most quoted person in the catechism behind Jesus and Augustine. Uh, And I've talked a bit about Barnabas, and this uh, John Mark is the one who wrote Mark. The three of them, in many ways, defined Christianity more than most. And I just think about that, how many towns they went to. I mean, they walked hundreds and hundreds of miles. It's just a remarkable thing. And and I guess that idea of those three home run hitters in one stadium just blows me away. Um, In terms of the two things from the gospel, I invite us to remember these things. First, Jesus says for the third time in the gospel of John, I didn't come into the world to condemn it, but to save it. And I really really want us to think about that. Um, It helps me in those moments where I wonder about God. Uh, How far will his patience go with me? How far will his mercy go? And intellectually, I think I know, of course, it will go to infinity, but every once in a while I pour a little bit of too much of me on the equation, and as a result, I start to change God's love to look more like my worries. In the end, Jesus says three times that I can remember, I didn't come into the world to condemn it. I came into the world to save it. And that's a good model for us, not just with our personal struggles, but our struggles with the things we see. Uh, And you may have picked this up, (laughs) but I'm not a fan of the idea of Christians engaging in the cultural wars. Because what we keep doing is pretending we can defeat the devil using his tactics. And so we stand up and proclaim our righteousness and the sinfulness of those other people. And maybe we acknowledge some of our little sins. Uh, But I think in the end, we've really got to redefine how we are called to fight for virtue. That we're called to fight for virtue by accepting God's words and living them. And as he says just three times in this passage... I don't condemn that God every day is offering us truth and light and love. And if we don't take it, it's not Jesus going, I condemn you. It's us saying, I don't want salvation. So in the end, those are the three things I would love for us to think about. First, to just rejoice that God put that team together. I just can't get over that. A Barnabas, Paul, and uh, John Mark. That blows me away. Rejoice in the teams God gives us, I guess. And the second thing is to remember, God's goal is to save you, not condemn you. And the third thing to remember is that we are not to run around condemning, but to remember that in the same way, you and I can only take a little bit of that truth, beauty, and light because of our brokenness. That's true of other people too. And our job isn't to keep pointing out to them you're doing it wrong, but to point out to them who Jesus is and what that means. So I'll quit going on and on now. And I pray that this Eucharist strengthened us to redefine our love and our understanding of love by Jesus and not by our standards and to rejoice in the great people he puts in our life. Amen. Let's rise now and offer our prayers to the Lord. For the church, may God bring unity where it is needed and build bridges where there is division. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all elected leaders and their advisors, may the wisdom and peace of Christ inspire them in legislating and leading their people justly. 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick in mind, body, and spirit, May Christ, the healer, touch them through the hands and presence of a friend today. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this local faith community, may God grant courage for its members to proclaim the word of God with love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who were baptized in Christ and now have died in Christ. For lives lost to the coronavirus. For all Holy Family parishioners who died on this date, including Michael Zembo, Cameron Mooney, and Lawrence A. Millen, may they, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the intentions of Donna Bledsoe Gladfelter, for whom this Mass is being Mm. offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father in heaven, we offer you our prayers, and we trust that because you love us, you always give us what we need. We make this prayer of faith in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed Blessed be be God God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, And may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord, wash me of my iniquities and cleanse me of my sins. Thank you, Lord. Wash me and I'll be clean. Please rise and pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. Through him, the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to his faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising, the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Thank you, Jesus. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray, at partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Durrell, our Bishop, Carl, our Bishop Emeritus, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Thank you, Lord. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. May the mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Okay, Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who by the will of the Father and work of the Holy Spirit through your death gave life to the world. Free me by this, your most holy body and blood from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me always faithful to your commandments. Never let me be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. And may the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. I have chosen you from the world, says the Lord. I have appointed you to go out and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Alleluia. Alleluia. Oh, thank you, Lord. Bear fruit. Together, let us pray the spiritual communion prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in this most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. 
I embrace you as if you are already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Wednesday. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I have just a few things for you really quick. Uh, first of all, please don't forget quarantine catechism today at noon. I'm very excited about this topic. We're going to be looking at uh, what does it mean to be human? What does the church teach us is a human person? And how do we act in the way that we are created to be? I, I think you'll really find this helpful. And if not, it's because you're a huge sinner. You know, no big deal. But uh, second, uh, a a little over a week ago, and I, I'll be honest, I lost track of this. Our uh, bishop announced we'll be resuming public masses at some point soon and that there would be a follow-up. We were waiting for follow-up, and we haven't heard it yet. And what I underestimated, and I'm sorry for this, how many of you are distressed about that, and I totally get it. So um, please know that we really can't do any announcement or any such thing until we hear from our bishop what we're allowed to do. Uh, a few people have said, well, the state says we can't. We, I'm going to be candid. We go with our bishop, not the state. And uh, that works to our benefit in many ways. You may recall, we quarantined a week before the state said you should. Um, you know, our bishop is making his best judgment with uh, medical professionals and a, what, due consideration of his flock. So certainly we're going to restart Mass soon in public. We just don't know how that looks yet. So hang in there, okay, and forgive me. I should have really talked about this last week, but uh, a million things going on up there. So um, come Holy Spirit. There was something else, was there? No? Okay. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Um, and may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Oh, thank you, Lord. St. Michael, the archangel, defend and us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl throughout the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. St. Joseph, pray for us. St. Paul, pray for us. St. Barnabas, pray for us. St. Mark, pray for us. Thank you, Lord. Ah, we love you. <laughs> I should do like a soup. Does it look like I'm running really fast? Yeah. Sweet. Oh, good morning, children of God. How are you? Oh, oh my gosh. I'm getting old. It's good to see you all. I can't wait till I actually see you. Smell you. I'm just kidding. Okay. So, uh, guys, uh, today I don't have as long as usual because I have a brief rite of exorcism. <laughs> no, I don't have as long uh, just because my schedule's a little wacky today. Oh, gosh, I got to tell you, what was it, four weeks ago? Holy Saturday. 
when I was walking with the cross, I stepped in a pothole and I popped this ankle and it still hurts. The governor needs to fix the roads. The governor needs to fix the roads without raising our taxes 9,000%. I remember I, I thought, well, I didn't vote for her to be honest, okay? I always vote third party and my people never win. But when she did win, I thought, okay, maybe she'll get after the roads. But then her idea was, well, give me a trillion dollars of your money and I'll fix it. I could have done that. Lord, okay. I didn't mean to get political. I didn't even mean that political. I just think it's funny. I'll be honest. Okay, so do saints have last names? You will. Okay, uh, that's a complicated question for a few reasons. The idea of using last names like we do, and you're going to laugh, but truly, is basically an American invention. Um, it, it's really fascinating. Other people did it, I want to be clear. But for most of human history, it was like, um, come Holy Spirit. Someone just asked me this about Jesus. What would people have called Jesus in his day? They wouldn't have said Jesus Christ. Because that's saying Jesus anointed one, okay? Which, you know. Uh, they would have called him Yeshua bar Yusuf, okay? Namely, Jesus son of Joseph, okay? Bar means son of, so today's first reading. Remember Barnabas? We say Barnabas, they would have said Barnabas, which means the son of encouragement, okay? Son of encouragement. So how did it work? You were born uh, and your parents gave you a name, but the understanding was you weren't going to be called by that name very often. Instead, you were simply son of whoever Pa was. Okay? At some point in your life, you would come to be known for a trait or your fa you would have maybe distinguished yourself in a specific way, and that would become the name they called you. So, uh, I, I ho is this making sense? Okay, so like if you think of the Roman emperors, right? Caesar Augustus, nobody called him Caesar Augustus. They called him Gaius, that was his name, right? I don't know how to explain that, but almost every of the first seven Leaders of Rome, post-Republic, for example, their names were all Gaius, and everyone called them Gaius. Caligula, if you called him Caligula, you got killed. Caligula means um, sandal, okay? Little, little, little sandal that, uh, well, I could go on and on, okay? So the way we do names now, Joe Krupp, meaning Joe, mom and dad gave me the name. Krupp is my dad's, dad's name. You with me? That's kind of new. So when you look at saints, what you usually get is their first name and either their pa's name or where they're from. So Francis of Assisi, nobody called Francis of Assisi in his life. They just called him Francis, right? We say Francis of Assisi because there's a crap ton of them. There's a Francis of Rome that's a saint. There's a Francis of Baldwin that's a saint. I mean, you could go on and on and on. So we, I, is this making sense? Okay, is that helpful? Do I need to shut up now? Okay. Um, why are the disciples renamed? John called Mark. Oh, same reason. Okay. Um, there was the name mom and dad gave you, the name everyone called you, and sometimes there was a name because everything changed. So Simon, uh, his name in Greek means um, pebble, small stone, and Jesus changed his name to Petrus, uh, the rock. Okay. Why? Because Jesus changed his mission. Uh, Jacob, Jacob. God changed his name to Israel. Why? God changed his mission. And, right, so whenever someone's mission changed, they would get a new name often. I know that sounds crazy. But I remember at one point when I was at MSU where Jesus went to school, uh, there was a receiver and his last name was Shontag. Uh, Sontag, I think is how Americans said it. And I told him, I said, that means Sunday in German. And what can, I can guarantee you Right? At some point in your past, one of your relatives did something on a Sunday that was so noteworthy. I know this sounds crazy. They just started calling him Sunday. It's how it worked back then. Um, and he told me later, he talked to his grandpa who said, you know, my dad always talked about that. Isn't that crazy? So, uh, we'll hire this. so that's why the disciples are renamed. And when you get um, two Judases who were Jesus' disciples... And one, it didn't work out. So we changed his name. He didn't change it. While he was alive, they called him Judas. There were a million people named Judas in Jesus' life. It was a very common name. Uh, and why? Because of Judas Maccabee. Uh, 
Jewish general. That's hard to say. I feel like I'm going on and on. Okay, so they changed his name just so you wouldn't get confused. I know that sounds crazy. And some of the disciples, we call them by two different names because we're calling them either their Latin name or their Greek name or their Hebrew name. Gosh, I feel like I'm, okay. Once Mass does start, will communion be handled differently? No idea. I, I'm sorry. I, I don't feel like I should tell you what I think we should do because that's pride. Um, I'm going to wait for my proper authority uh, to tell me what to do. Okay, so pardon me that I'm not more helpful on this, and I get it. That wasn't a bad question. Okay, I just mean in the sense of um, come Holy Spirit. Basically, I don't want to run in front of my bishop. Yeah? Okay. When they talk about putting chips in our body or putting our handprint on the computer screen, is this the mark of the beast? I don't think so. I'm familiar with that school of thought. Um, I think we need to be careful, right? Like one of my buddies pointed out, right? It says, uh, once the, if we are fundamentalists, and we're not, but for my fundamentalist friends, they worry about these Apple watches. Why? Because you can just put your wrist down and buy, which is specifically what the Bible says the mark of the beast is going to be like, a mark on your head and on your wrist that you need in order to buy things. But, uh... There's a lot to it, and I, I'll be honest, I don't really have the time to get into it. But for fundamentalists, yeah, that might be a factor. For Catholics, get this, and I mean this, this is nuts, okay? The bigger factor about putting chips in us is at what point are we no longer what God made, okay? So if you ever want to read a fantastic book about this, believe it or not, it's called... Um, Come Holy Spirit. I think it's called Next by Michael Crichton. Okay, it's a book by Michael Crichton. And I think, no, no, it's called Pray, P-R-E-Y. Okay, uh, and if you like fiction, it's very worth your time. But remember, he's got a medical degree from Harvard. He's writing with footnotes. He's using his fiction to tell you some truths. Yeah, all right, hold on. Come here. Um, I'm going to come. That's okay. Uh... So for Catholics, the bigger worry is this coming phenomena of genetic manipulation and the possibility of molecular computers, the idea that someday you and I are able to take a pill that, oops, okay, Marius is tangled in the cord for the camera. Can you still see this gorgeous face? Yeah. No, he's all tangled. It's okay, mijo. You're a good boy. Um, so... Uh, that's a bigger worry for the church, that someday, theoretically, you and I will be able to swallow a pill that has nanites or molecular computers that fundamentally change us. Believe it or not, that's the bigger concern, because we're made human. Uh, so anyway, I feel like I kind of went on a side note. Do I have glasses on? No? Once attendance is allowed, will you continue to stream? You have a large audience, and many are not close to Holy Family. Yeah, um, we actually started streaming, what, a couple months before this all happened, and we did it because we recognized so many of our family were unable to come to Mass. And by that, I don't mean we had soccer, and that's more important. Uh, I mean the elderly who just couldn't get home or couldn't get to Mass, and it really hurt them. So what we had here is a dream of live streaming Mass uh, and someday, this is our dream, okay, that once our uh, thinger opens the... New church. New church. <laughs> Guys, I got about three hours of sleep at the most last night, I'm sorry. Once our new church opens, come Holy Spirit, that will live stream a mass, and simultaneously there will be people at the nursing homes on our behalf who are praying mass live with them and then giving them communion at the proper time. So believe it or not, that's how all this started. It started before, uh, and it will continue after, right? Okay. Um, well, guys, we're out of questions, and that's good, because I, I kind of got to move today. It's a very full day for me, and if you would pray, that'd be good. I don't know. I had busy brain last night. You ever get that? Or you just can't sleep. A million things going on up there. So, oh, I'm not, I'm not unhappy or distressed. I just busy brained. So... Uh, I will see you beautiful people today at noon. 
and I'm really fired up for this class. And then if I don't see you at noon, I'll see you tomorrow at 8. Okay? Uh, I thank Jesus for you all. Love you. Bye-bye.